related rates. What we're talking about in related rates is how to relate a formula to its change according to time. It's change according to time. Um, for instance, how is cost changing according to time? How is profit changing according to time? How is a volume of something that's expanding or shrinking changing according to time? So uh, how, what's the volume doing at exactly three seconds? Is it expanding? Is it uh, decreasing? At what rate is it doing that? That's what we're talking about here. Does that make sense to you? So I'll, be, I'll give you like an introduction here. This is basically relating a formula with time. That's what related rates mean for us. Relating a formula with time. Here's an example. We're not going to work all the way through this example. I just want to give you the idea on what's happening here. And, and then we'll start with some simpler ones. I'm going to start, it's kind of weird. I'm going to start you off with one of the harder examples. And then we'll make it easier. Okay, just so you see the idea first. Let's say that I have this cone. That's my cone here. And what I'm doing is this cone is underneath a, a faucet. It's my faucet. Okay, and, and water's coming out of it. It fills it up to a certain level, and then we take and we cut the cone right there so the water starts coming out. So maybe this is like a, uh, some sort of a, a water container for a city. A huge cone, usually they're, they're probably cylinders, but let's just pretend it's a cone. It's the same idea would apply for a cylinder. But it's, it's going to fill it up to a certain level, and once it gets to that level, maybe it opens up. And that's our idea for this, this idea, or for, for this related rates problem. So after a while, I'm going to have some sort of a level of water here. True? <laughs> and of course that water is going to be, as soon as I open up this spot, I, I shut this off, I open up this bottom and start leaking out. So probably pretty fast at first, whatever, whatever that takes place, it's going to be leaking out somewhere. Now, our cone has a couple of dimensions to it. What do you need to know to find the volume of a cone? Because we're going to talk about volume here in just a little bit. OK, we do need a height of the cone. I heard height first. Yes, that's a height. And the radius of the cone is probably pretty important. So you got height and radius. What I want to do is find the rate of change of the volume of the water with respect to time. I know that's a, it's a horrible sounding question, right? Find the rate of change of the volume of the water with respect to time. That's our idea. Well, here's our issue. Um, does the water fill the whole cone up? So that H and that R, if you think about this, the H and the R stood for the whole cone, right? If it were filled up, that would be the, the water's H and R as well. However, as we lose water, what's happening to the H? It's getting sure, and the R is also decreasing as well, right? So at certain times, this is going to have different radiuses and different heights and therefore a different volume of water. So we're going to be able to, I'm going to show you how to do this, we're going to be able to find out uh, how this volume of water is changing at any given moment in time. So here's what, what you need to do. The first thing is find a formula that relates what you want to talk about. So basically, what are we talking about? The rate of change of what? So we need a volume. So we need to know the volume of a cone first. So it starts out quite <coughs> easy. It says, find me the volume of a cone. Now, do you know the volume of a cone? Do you know the volume of a cylinder? Oh boy. <laughs> Do you know the area of a circle? Oh good, okay, let's start there. That's the area of a circle, right? 
Notice that a cylinder is just a whole bunch of circles stacked on top of each other for however much the height is. So uh, area, surface area of a circle is pi r squared, therefore the volume of a cylinder is pi r squared times the height. To find the volume of a cone, you cut that in thirds. So it's one third pi r squared inch. Or pi over three r squared inch. Now here's the deal. Um, this relates what we want it to relate. Look at the board. It relates volume with the radius and the height. That's all of our measurements up here. Are you, are you agreed on that? You got to have that for a related rate problem. But the the other problem is, is there any time anywhere? Now here's how we're going to use implicit differentiation to our advantage. You can take a derivative of this equation with respect to any variable that you really want to. Now some of them will make sense, but we're going to take it with respect to time. So we're going to implicitly derive this formula with respect to time, because that's what the related rate does, is with respect to time. So find a derivative with respect to time. Implicitly. Why can we do this? Why is this allowed for us to do? Well, think about it. Is volume changing according to time? Is the radius changing according to time? Is the height changing according to time? All of those things are then functions of t, functions of time. Just like y was a function of x in our earlier implicit differentiation problems, all of these are now functions, well pi over 3 is not, that's a constant, but h and r and v are all functions in terms of time. So we can do that, but you just have to be careful, because since these are all functions of time, do you remember that when y was a function of x, you had to take a, and put a dy dx after everything? Because it was a function of x. Now every one of these variables is a function of time. So we're going to have a d whatever dt after every one of them because they're all implicit functions of time. Notice how n none of these are solved for t, right? I can't say h equals this t, v equals this t. R, I can't say that. So I can't solve them for t explicitly, so I have to treat them implicitly, just like we did in the previous examples. You're going to see this in just a moment. So we can do this because v, r, and t, I'm sorry, v, r, and uh, h, sorry are all functions of time. So we're lucky that implicit differentiation was such a good lead-in to this. Uh, so let's, let's go ahead and do that. We'll take the derivative implicitly of, the, of both sides. So when we took an implicit different, uh, derivative, we did a d, d something of both sides to start off with, right? So this would be a d, 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 d what? T. T. Why T? Yeah. What d, d, t stands for is a derivative with respect to time, or in other words, it gives you the, listen carefully, the rate of change according to the time. Does that make sense? The related rate, the rate of change, the related rate of change, because a derivative is a rate of change, according to the time. So d, d, t, sure, of the volume equals, equals, well, ddt of that entire right-hand side as well. Let's start with the easy side. Easy side is the left-hand side. What is uh, ddt of v? What's it, remember, v is just a, a single variable. What's the derivative of v? It would be one, but then you have the chain rule. Why do you have the chain rule here? Is v a function of t? Yeah. So just like y was a function of x and you did a dy dx, v is a function of t. So look what this says. This says the derivative of v with respect to t. This says the derivative of v with respect to t. v is a function of t. So you have to have that. It's implicit. It's the implicit way to write, oh, sorry, it's, it's stating that v is a function of t. You have to have the dvdt. Here's what this says in English. This says, this is how the volume is changing with respect to time. That's the rate of change of the volume. Does that make sense to you? 
you see why we need that DBDT? It is an implicit derivative. Now on the right hand side, uh, oh, what now? Oh, explain why I need a product rule. Because you have two separate uh, functions. Okay, so what are my variables over here? Are each of those a function in terms of t? Yes, I said all of them were. So if we're taking this with respect to t, that's a function in terms of t, that's a function in terms of t, and they're being multiplied. That means a product rule. How many people see the product rule up there? Okay, let's do it. Mom, you set the product rule. Um, you can do it one of two ways. You can take the pi over 3 out, or you can associate it with one of the variables. It really doesn't matter. I think I took it out. I don't, I don't know why, but it really doesn't, doesn't matter. Okay, let's see. When you do this first derivative, this part's going to give you 2r, 2r. What else do I need besides the 2r? Oh, besides the h. I need dr dt. Did you guys all have dr dt? It's implicit, so you have to have not only 2r, but and not only the h, but you're going to get a, actually, you know what, I'll write this way so you see it. This gives you the 2r dr dt times h. That's this piece right here. That's what that gives you. Then the plus, this is going to give you r squared. Sure. What's the dh dt? What's that going to give you? There's dh dt. Show of hands, how many people got 2r dr dt and then h and then the r squared dh dt? Do you all get that as well? So if we pretty this up just a little teeny bit, I'll probably put the h in front of the dr dt just because that's like that's how we like to write it. So 2rh dr dt plus r squared dh dt. Now, if you didn't pull out the pi over 3, you have a pi over 3 here and you have a 2 pi over 3 there. Is it any different? No, it's the same thing. What I really want to you look at, we're not going to actually do an example of this one. I wanted you to get this idea down. But here's, the, here's what we would have to know in order to figure this out. If I said, what's the, how is the volume changing, or what's the rate of change of the volume at, hmm, and inserted this, this question to you, I'd have to give you a lot of information. You see, we would have to know not only the R at that time, not only the H at that time, not only the D, we need to know the DRDT. So we'd have the r, we'd have the r, that's the radius. We'd have the h, we'd have the height. But we'd also need to know, well, we need to know dr dt. What is dr 